Mitch Hedberg was one of the greatest comedians of all time. He might not be a household name like George Carlin or Louis C.K., but he'll always be remembered for his signature style and one-of-a-kind delivery. I bought a two-bedroom house, but it's up to me how many bedrooms there are, though, isn't it? <laughs> this bedroom has an oven in it. Unfortunately, before he could truly break through and claim the fame he deserved, Hedberg died of a drug overdose in 2005. Although his time here was sadly cut short, let's take a look at the life of the amazing Mitch Hedberg. Minnesota Nice When you think of Mitch Hedberg's laid-back West Coast stoner vibe, you might be surprised to learn that he actually came from the Midwest, St. Paul, Minnesota to be exact. Despite the fact that Middle America is generally a pretty conservative region, Hedberg never really tried to hide his liberal drug use. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. It was early in his life in Minnesota that he and his family discovered that he had a heart defect. His mother claimed his condition often caused him anxiety. Although the coroner's report ruled that Hedberg died of a drug overdose, it's possible that his heart condition may have contributed to his untimely death. The Acting Bug Hedberg got his first big break on The Late Show with David Letterman. This led to an appearance at the 1998 Just for Laughs Festival, where he really made an impression. Fox jumped on the Hedberg bandwagon and signed him to a $500,000 development deal to try to come up with a TV show. Unfortunately, Fox and Hedberg never found a project that worked, so he was dropped from his deal. But the next year, he went on to write and star in his own movie, Los Enchiladas, a film about workers at a Mexican restaurant in Minnesota. Jay Chandrasekhar of Super Troopers edited the film and said on a podcast that Hedberg was great, but kind of hard to work with, because he and his co-star would get too high to remember their lines. By take four, they're, they're kind of looking at each other. Is it your, is it your line? Is it mine? Like right. they, you know, they're being recorded, right? By take six, the two of them were just literally standing there looking at each other. <laughs> the film premiered at Sundance in 1999, but that was about the end of it. Los Enchiladas was never released to DVD, and it's only been shown a handful of times since its premiere. When his movie failed to gain any interest, Hedberg's acting career kind of fell apart as well. After being cast as a stoner on that 70s show, he made a brief appearance in the film Almost Famous and later took a small role in The Lords of Dogtown before his death in 2005. Comedy Central Blowout Mitch Hedberg's first Comedy Central Presents special was a big deal, but he struggled to win over the audience. His material was just too different from what they were used to at the time. I don't have a girlfriend. I just know a girl who would get really mad if she heard me say that. <laughs> the edited version of the special makes it look like Hedberg nailed the set, but the unedited version is totally different. At one point, he just sits down on the stage looking defeated, but keeps going. In the end, he won the crowd over, but it was hard work. And Pringles is a layback company. They said, f*** it, cut him out. <laughs> a helping hand. Even though his Comedy Central special was disappointing, Hedberg still had plenty of success on the road. Time magazine even went so far as to call him the next Seinfeld. But even in the midst of his growing fame, he never forgot the underdogs. When Mike Birbiglia was still early in his career, Hedberg went out of his way to help the new comedian out. Hedberg performed at Birbiglia's CD release party, but he didn't just perform, he flew himself there and refused to be paid. And when Hannibal Burris was just starting out, Hedberg did him a huge favor too. When Hedberg played a weekend of sold-out shows in Chicago, he let Burris and a few other inexperienced comedians go on stage during his set. As Burris put it, that's unheard of, comedians just don't do that. But Hedberg was apparently happy to give any stand-up a chance. That one act of kindness kick-started Burris's career as a stand-up comedian. Never say no. Toward the end of his life, Hedberg was constantly touring. He'd do three shows a night, then go to the next place and do another weekend of shows. His wife said Hedberg never passed on a job. He'd been rejected so many times, he felt like he had to accept while he had the chance, or else all the rejections could start coming back. Even at the peak of his fame, he never seemed to feel like he'd been accepted, so he relentlessly traveled and performed until his last days. He had severe stage fright. It's strange to hear that a guy who made his living performing in front of people was also terrified of doing so. But Mitch Hedberg was just that. He told Time journalist Joel Stein during a 1998 interview, I don't like to connect with the crowd. I find that if you look at people's faces, you see a disappointed face. And so, the prototypical Hedberg performance involved dark sunglasses, long hair draped over his eyes, and set-long staring contests with the floor. He also, as the New York Times put it, sometimes closed his eyes as he performed. Remember, the guy pretty much always wore sunglasses, and he would still close his eyes to keep the crowd away. He would criticize his own jokes on stage. 
Every comedian messes up a joke on occasion. They're human too, after all. But for the most part, comedians tend to ignore their flubs, moving right on to the next joke like nothing happened. Not Hedberg, though. He tended to ruminate on his failed jokes, criticizing them on stage on a level that few comedians could ever get away with. Dogs are forever in the push-up position. <laughs> that joke is dumb, I'm aware of that. Deadspin likened it to him breaking the fourth wall, turning from comic to critic if a joke didn't land. In an odd way, it made him more endearing and relatable to his fans. It didn't hurt that far more of his jokes landed than crashed. He thought he could moderate his drug use. Rather than kick his longtime drug habit, Hedberg attempted to moderate it. In May 2003, the comedian was arrested for heroin possession, which is often a wake-up call for people to stop what they're doing, or at least try to. Hedberg had other ideas. In a 2004 interview with Las Vegas Weekly, Hedberg claimed he was going to do much less so people couldn't associate him with drugs anymore. As he said, you can't do copious amounts of drugs and stay alive, so not all drug use is tapered off, but I've learned to just stay under the radar. He thought the plan might help his career, theorizing during that interview that since he got arrested for drugs once, any mistake he makes in the future will get blamed on drugs. So to make himself look better, he was planning to do less drugs and be really quiet about the ones he did do. Sadly, the plan was doomed from the start. Arrest and Hospitalization Hedberg's drug problem was never a secret, though most people didn't realize how serious it was. Although he was open about smoking weed or doing acid, he kept his heroin addiction out of his act. Then, in 2002, he was arrested for heroin possession, and soon after, he wound up in the hospital. His leg was so infected from injecting heroin that the doctors almost amputated it. It was 13 hours of surgery. They took um, muscle out of, the, out of his back and transferred it to his leg. Once he recovered, Hedberg returned to stand-up and sadly continued his drug use. In 2005, he died of a drug overdose. This morning, we've learned a popular comic from St. Paul has passed away. Mitch Hedberg died in a hotel room in New Jersey on Wednesday. Though he had a tragic end, Hedberg was one of the most interesting comedians of his time and will be remembered for his exceptional delivery, timing, and creative one-liners. He might not have been the new Seinfeld, but he never needed to be. He was Mitch Hedberg. I like to take a toothpick and throw it in the forest and say, you're home. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.